day we be grinding And if you ask me, we the best I'ma be like Yo, that's us with the crazy flow And you gon' hear us on the radio This is how we do every day We be grinding And if you wanna come and test us I'ma be like Yo, that's us with the crazy flow And you gon' hear us on the radio When I'm spitting all these rhymes What's going on, fellas? Welcome to Volume 14, Part 1. This is Coach KK coming back at you with some more of this good stuff. And here we are from the New Orleans Saints playbook. This scheme, ebook, game plan, strategy, whatever you want to call it, is the gun tight offset tight end. Now, I know this um, formation has been around a couple of years. Um, some people would say it's glitchy. Um, it's highly effective. And it's not glitchy to me, you know. I don't operate under hot routes and hot route master and moving guys across the formation and sending them crisscross and motion snapping players. I don't do that kind of stuff. You know, we do concepts and game plans, you know. So I'm coming at you a little different from what everybody else usually do. Um, we attack open space. And we manipulate defenders and the users. We don't manipulate the AI. You know, we, we try to make it simulation style. So, yeah, that's how I want to say it today. This is the New Orleans Saints playbook. Um, this formation can also be found in the LA Chargers and the Green Bay Packers playbook. It's a, it's a few slight differences, though. Like um, the New Orleans Saints, they actually name their plays after Saints. You know, um, like Saints drive out, for instance. That's just called regular drive out in the other two playbooks. All right. So um, another difference is the reason why I picked this one is because in the Saints playbook, you have half back counter. Notice, let's let's start off just, well, let's get on the field first. Let's get on the field. Let me, yeah, let's get on the field real quick. Um, we'll pick a play. I'll pick half back counter. i do random. All right, as you can see, let's look at the formation for what it is. I always start off doing that part. As you can see, this is a tight, compressed formation. You have um, three receivers and a tight end, and everybody is tight. We've already done a tight, um, the tight Y off, the gun tight Y off flex this year. So this is similar, except we don't have RPOs and stuff here. This is just X's and O's. So, um, like I say, over here we do gameplay footage. We don't manipulate the computer. We manipulate the user. You know, we attack open space. All right, and it's play by play. We make everything look the same. That's what I do on every scheme. All right, so let me, let me I had to get that out real quick. Let's look at this formation for what it is. As you can see, the two guys in the slot, they're on the line of scrimmage. The two guys off the line of scrimmage, they're on the outside. If you look at both sides on the sidelines, they're inside the numbers. That means we can work the corners um, depending on the range and the depth of the DBs. Now, this is this is very critical right here. This formation right here takes patience. You have to hang in the passing windows, you know, because they're, they're, it's just compressed. So you have to hang in there. And sometimes people are jumbled and mumbled up. And you got to give them time to free up space. Guys, I have plenty of gameplay footage. I have to make sure you get the dialogue first of what this formation is really is. We want to really, because our goal is to make sure any given down, everybody can get the ball. We don't want the defense just trying to key on one specific person. All right? So, yeah. So, we always can work the corners. We see that part. And because they're close to the line of scrimmage and, you know, they're inside, they can get across on mesh concepts very quickly. Mesh concepts is going to be like the bread and butter. That's going to be like the base, the check down. You know, that everything kind of operates from the mesh concepts. And let's talk about the run game. As you can see, um, we'll get off the field real quick, go back to the playbook. I do want to start setting audibles. As you can see, we got inside zone. What we're going to do with inside zone, we're going to make a play that plays off it. You might want to put 0-1 trap. 
I'm going to put halfback counter because sometimes, you, as you can see, this is a shotgun, right? So let's talk about inside zone and halfback counter at one time. Since this is a shotgun and the running back is on the right side, the defensive line will usually shift to the way that the running back is facing. You know, they won't be thinking counter is coming. You get what I'm saying? And on top of the counter, you have the left guard from the backside pulling around. So he's going to try to, you know, it's just, it's, it's almost like a halfback base. Remember the, um, the gun spread formations we used to do with the halfback base? It's almost like that. So there are going to be a lot of times where the defensive line will shift and depending on how they shift, you're going to, you know, call a play specifically like that. And sometimes to make this a three-headed monster, I have inside zone in here and I have counter. And I will come out in the 01 trap. All right. So let's put that out there. So as you can see, the defensive line, let's look at the run. This is just the run game first. I came out in 01 trap, as you can see. And 01 trap looks beautiful right now. But there's times where, you know, you're going to have to do inside zone or you're going to have to swing it back to the counter. Like this time, I wouldn't recommend counter because the edge on the right side is, is you know, it's, it's kind of occupied. So play around with these three plays. This, this will help you enable three running plays off rip. And this is not a scheme that requires you to run the ball to set up the pass. But if you sprinkle in a few running concepts, you will kind of suck the defense in. It'll bring some of the DBs onto the line of scrimmage so you can go over the top. All right, here we go. So that was the run game. You got a three-headed monster. You can take it um, inside zone. You can take it back with a trap. And that counter looks different also from trap. And draw works sometimes too because we know all the time that the, you know, the linebacker is usually going to be sitting in the middle. And once he see, you know, passing icons come up, he might take a, a drift back. And another thing with halfback draw is the fact that we're in a tight compressed formation like this, they're going to be running a lot of zone coverage. So on a point of attack, the defense will be bailing back into, you know, like deep forks and hook zones. And they got the drop zones out there because they're going to be waiting on the, on the, you know, the, the air raid principles. So yeah, halfback draw is effective. So yeah. So that's enough with the run game. Let's get started with the other audibles. Of course, we're going to take stick out of here. I mean, this is a dead-end concept. It, it makes no sense. It's pointless when you can have crazy routes out here. 
And what I like to do is put the Saints drive out. This play right here is the bread and butter of the formation. This is the money play. <laughs> like I say, we don't focus on money plays and one play touchdowns, right? But this is the play that that's the anchor of the formation. All right. We're not here trying to score a touchdown every play. We, we're, we're still moving methodically and we're still moving strategically down the field. This is still considered a 10 yard fight. All right. <laughs> Saints drive out three concepts into one. First of all, you got the running back slash and cross. That's always or often at times. This is like an automatic route. All right. This is like an automatic alert route. That running back slashes through the defense and he's already going up the field. And if you rat catch it sometime, I've showed you that plenty of times, right? That you can rat catch it and be gone. In fact, from here on out, I'm going to always implement this route into the scheme. Number two, the drive concept. Usually the user is in the middle and sometime with that drive concept, he'll be waiting on like crisscrosses, but he'll see both of the guys from the right side going left. So he'll freeze sometime and you can make this into like a high low read. And if that if that's too occupied, you can move over to the third part of the concept, which is the speed out on top of that with the corner. So like a like a bench concept um, that speed out does wonders and you will see it because this formation right here is all about this is all about range depth and the position you know the position of the players you know you can all the, the players can always be there but if they're not in position and and face you know to the right way to attack the ball you can just get one step on them and you're gone so I'm going to show you a lot of examples of that. This is going to be real fun. And especially the four-minute offense on the next videos. All right, let's move forward. PA shot scene. The reason why we have this in here, as you can see, it's the same as um, Saints drive out. You look at the left side of the concept, look at it. It's the same. But this time we tagging a play action to it that sometimes that can suck the linebacker in and move him out the middle. And on top of that, we have that wheel route on the right side. Now, the reason why we have this in the audibles, I mean, if you look at the audibles, it's not really nothing. Sometimes if you want to have, have an extra pass and play in here, take the counter out and put something else in here. Put something in here like, um, you know, the slot out or the mesh spot. We're going to talk about that too, or the screen. But for right now, I have counter. But back to the PA shot scene. All right. <laughs> We're going to feel. I'm going to actually get on the field this time. All right. Sometimes the defense is going to be out. They're, they're going to base a line or they're going to man a line. They're going to um, be backed up or they're going to be tight right in your face. And that's where that wheel route comes in at. You know, there's going to be times where 
the DB, he'll be there, but he just won't be looking. You know, it, it's all about range and depth, you know, and, and if he's in position or not. So it's not glitchy. It's real life. You know, it's it's 11 on 11. It's X's and O's. Um, and then on top of that, you know, you might have to, what if you, you misread the concept and you might have to have that speed out on the left side wide open. So you just never know. And my goal is to, to, to try not to roll out. Once you roll out, you're going to be cutting away half of your field. Like, let's say I do this concept right here. Let's see. We go to the drive. Now, let's say we do this play right here, right? And we roll out to the left. So we're taking away half of the concept. And if these two guys don't get open on the left, we're dead fish in the water. So keep the field in front of you. Have pocket presence. Take your three-step drop back. Move up in the pocket. And, and look for, for quick alert routes. That's why you try to, you got to look for automatics. <laughs> That's why you audible to stuff like this. So that's the PA shot scene. That's deadly. That's lethal. There you have it. Next up on the list, let's just talk about the mess spot. Now, as you can see, um, Saint spot and mess spot is pretty much the same thing. Our key um, factor in this is the spot route you know that receiver doing that little hook route there's times where like 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 we always have mess concepts right um like the saints halfback wheel or the mess spot as you can see that the linebacker he's going to be in the middle he's going to follow one of those guys usually if you look at the mess spot he's going to follow one of those guys <laughs> and it's so funny and circle which is callaway he would just come right there and just sit in the soft spot of the defense so you got to make all this stuff play off one another
and there is an appropriate time to call all this stuff. And sometimes they'll just leave the running back wide open. As you can see, the, the, the cornerbacks aren't pressed in. They're back. So this gives me leverage right here. I can go inside zone. I can do a counter probably um, or a screen, you know. So, yeah, read the defense. Um, understand where they at which way they're facing and just look at if you, you know, if they have outside leverage or inside leverage, cause that that's the key right there. So it's easier done than said, um, catch me on the field for four minute offense in the next video. This is going to be hella fun. Um, enjoy the rest of this stuff. I got you guys. <laughs>